back to words. I'm here with Miss Danny Katz, and um, we didn't really do much of a pre-show because there's so much to talk about, and we're on a time schedule, and also a lot of what we talk about in pre-show always ends up being the better stuff, so we're just going to do that thing we talked about a while ago where we just push record, and that's the show. Um, so this might be a little bit all over the place, but there's a lot to talk about, and we're trying to talk about something almost as it's happening as well. So <laughs> please forgive us if we're a little bit more hyper and all over the place than we usually are. We will do, we will do our best to- <laughs> Ground it in. <laughs> to ground it in, but there's just a lot to talk about. So I have this long list of things that Danny sent me that we're gonna talk about, or we may talk about none of them and talk about something totally else. <laughs> so, Danny, my dear, where would you like to start? <laughs> um, well, do we want to go chronological and jump back to Andrew Wang, or do we want to talk about what's happening now with Joe and Jack and Tim and the girl? Okay, I would, uh, let's start with the Andrew thing, because if we start with the Joe, Jack, Tim thing, all that jazz, that may just take the whole thing, and we may not do that. So okay. why don't we start with the, the, the Andrew Yang stuff and set ourselves at 6.07, set ourselves a 6.37 deadline of when we have to stop talking about. Here he set an alarm for 6.37. So, there we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So you came to me with this. So t tell tell people because not everybody who listens to uh, Off Planet Media shows might, is probably yet be aware of Andrew Yang. They probably should be because whether you like him or not, what he's talking about is becoming a bigger and bigger issue. So everybody, go look up Andrew Yang. But in the meantime, Danny, give us a, a brief. Yeah, I think, I think the prompt is look up universal basic income. Like yeah. That's really what's key. And you're the one who sent me his, his Joe podcast. And I was on Joe Rogan a few weeks ago, yeah. Yes, exactly. And I'd heard him before and I wasn't super jazzed. And it is relevant because we're innovating at a rate that is eradicating jobs to such an extent that we need to take some sort of action and universal basic income, which he's dubbing the freedom dividend, um, is the key way of dealing with it. It's like the Patriot Act, right? The words Patriot, freedom, like when I hear them now, it's just triggered. They're so infected with right. mind control programming. It's just gross. So I was really super grossed out to hear that that was his rebrand because of his market testing. Right. He's smooth and he's slick and whatever. But Ooh. what annoyed me the most about how he was framing his, and he had a lot of information research on how great universal basic income, I think he's proposing like a thousand or twelve hundred dollars per person who decides to enroll and everyone has per, this. Per person, so universal basic income basically being somebody, people, all people, all American citizens would get, or maybe even not American citizens, who knows, whatever, <laughs> uh, would get a thousand or twelve hundred dollars a month every month. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Right. And so, there are a million reasons, like, of course, there's the worry that, like, okay, well, that's not really going to foster, like, innovation and putting a fire under people's asses, but I get that we're dealing with a, a crisis. It appears like we have a crisis coming down the barrel that we really need to deal with. But what annoyed me was- The crisis being he, automation. The crisis being automation. Yes. And so what annoyed me was he was talking about, you know, talking to the guys in Silicon Valley and how their hearts really are, are in the right place, but they just feel like their hands are tied and, you know, this is what's happening to the world. And then Joe, of course, like just skated over that. Oh, you're right. There's nothing we can do. And once again, I was like, why are we not questioning that? That is not an automatic that we have to accept this level of automation. We can decide, hey, as a, as a human species, as a global community, can decide, is this what's going to serve our species and our planet the best to keep innovating at this pace and to eradicate so many jobs? Or to, or, or to, keep, to, keep, to keep innovating in this way at this pace, right? Because it, it's a particular way of innovating. So uh, there's a couple of things that pop up to me, for me right away here. So first of all, it just dawned on me, the last guest I had on Off Planet Radio, Masaki Miyagawa, one of the things we talked about was mind control in the Asian American community. And I can't remember if it was during our interview or just in our private chat where he kept talking about uh, Daryl Hamamoto, who I, was, I should probably interview at some point. And maybe it's even somebody for you and I to interview as opposed to on Off Planet Radio, I'm not sure. And he wrote a book called Servitors of Empire, which is about uh, how Asian Americans sort of have been like, twisted into the space where they're serving, they're, they're serving the empire because of their 
high level of intellect and skills and their, their tendency towards obedience and all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And it just dawned on me, oh, maybe this Andrew Yang is kind of one of the, you know, I think that might be the next big thing we're going to see is a lot of more Asian Americans that are serving sort of the mind control positions that to this point have been mostly fulfilled by famous people, mostly white or black or whatever, right? Like Andrew Yang may be, you know, the first, you know, we, we don't have a lot of popular well-known Asian American politicians. There are a few, right? There are a few that you can th that you can think of. But if this guy, because he has this interesting idea, he may really be, even if he doesn't become, you know, president or a, he, he he's going to become like a firebrand for for this type of idea. I and mean, so probably just because it's like the identity era. Yeah. So like this we is to fit into that category to be balanced or whatever. Yeah. So okay. So the thing. So the, I don't know. So, I wouldn't. I don't know that I would give him that much credence. Like he does. He feels a bit flimsy to me. Right. But he's coming with this idea that would be an idea that they 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 that that would be liked to be pushed. Right. And so he's going to be the person attached to that idea. He's yeah. doing a more competent a more competent competent job selling it than other people have done so far. Right. Like <sighs> partly. So I listened to him on the Joe Rogan podcast. I'd heard him before on. Sam Harris's podcast. I personally cannot stand yeah, listening to Sam Harris. It. So mm -hmm. listening to anybody with Sam Harris does not help. This doesn't work <laughs> for me. Um, so I liked him much more on this podcast. I did think he was intelligent and, and interesting to listen to. And I felt like he had some good points and that his analysis of what is happening and why was actually pretty close to right. His idea of what we should do about it, I think is completely wrong. Um, but I do, I did, there were some things that he said in there that I thought were interesting and, and that, which is why I sent it to you, right? I like, totally I can, agree. I thought, yeah. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, no, you're fine. And so my biggest thing with him, with, the, with this, whole, you know, I don't like the name Freedom Dividend either. It sounds stupid. <laughs> um, but. It just sounds like a lie. Right. So like, it, but it also is just like, another way around this is also just like, we'll stop taxing people on their income. Right, like well, I, I, and to get to get the freedom dividend, you have to enroll. So it's like when you enrolled in Obamacare, you also signed something saying they can vaccinate you. Right, so, they want to vaccinate with you. So when you enroll, what rights are you going right, to? Well, that's that, that, there was there was a couple things. So my first thing is is this would have to if first this is not something I would ever be inclined to go for because I don't believe in government. But let's just pretend for a second that I did that I was a person who believed in government and had right. concerns. First of all it would have to come with no strings attached and he's not really addressing that, right? No, he's a string dude. No strings attached in terms of your speech, your, what, you, what you do with your health, what you do with your body, what you, if you do your drugs taxes, or not. Taxes, your, all of it. All that stuff, right? It would have to come with that. And then the other thing he never addresses and neither does anybody else is that how are we going to stop landlords from raising rent a thousand dollars place everybody raising prices on everything, right? If, every, if everybody knows that everybody has $1,000 more, everyone's going to raise prices. So how is that helping it? <laughs> That's such a good point. I love that. No one has ever brought, like, I'm just like, this is the stupidest. This is the same thing with, with Bernie Sanders when he talks about that if everybody needs a $15 an hour job. Well, if, if, if everybody, if all the pe people who make $15 an hour spend most of their money because they, right, like they don't, they don't have yeah, much. Everything will go up according. So everything that they sell at retail establishments, fast food establishments, places where people who make $15 an hour spend their money, everything is going to go up, you know, 15% at least. Right. right 20 of course. So like, what is the point of this? Well, I, I completely agree. <laughs> I think that's a great point. And then, and my original point, which I might've made clear, so stop me if I did, is like, why don't we just stop this before it gets to the point Automation. where everything's automated out? Because who's driving it? Amazon. Amazon's right. the one who's testing all these things so they can keep up with their delivery. Amazon's the one who's yeah. putting every mom and pop health food store in the country out of business with their like poison fake whole foods nonsense. Like we need to get off the Amazon team. It's, it, it, is an, it would be interesting to, to, to dig into Andrew Yang's background a little bit and see if he, he has any ties or connections. In the pockets of Amazon? That would make so much right? sense. <laughs> right? So, like, that, that would be interesting, right? And it would be interesting, yeah, there, it would be interesting to look at if Jeff, Be Jeff Bezos is backing Andrew Yang at all. Totally. Right? Like, if he's really given to his, like, campaign Kickstarter. I don't know if that's how yeah. he's doing it. But, but the other th so here's the thing with automation. Like, like – 
I don't, I don't think the point is for us to stop innovating at this pace. I think it's to stop innovating. Like, like I think personal automation, if you can find a way to automate things to serve you as an individual better, right? Like if you can automate income in terms of like, you know, if you, instead of just, you know, giving um, a point, you know, you do readings for people or you do coaching, right? Instead of just like, doing it where you have a class and people can come and pay. If you find a way to put your webinar on a thing that anybody can buy it at any time for $15 and you don't have to teach the class individually anytime, that's a way for you to personally automate your income that doesn't take work away from somebody who does physical labor. It's just, it makes, it's, it's like having 20 Dannys to do your job instead of one. I completely agree, but to quote Jack Dorsey's only line in tonight's game, <laughs> it's all about scale. So, right. So the scale of me automating at that pace versus the scale of Amazon or single serve plastic so, producers, dude, like it's, we've reached a tipping point where we have to start having global conversations about what's going to best serve the collective. Well, I, well, I think, I think, but I think what's, I, I mean, I think but what my point of what I was saying here is that people like it's, I don't think we want to encourage people to stop innovating at a rapid pace but i think we need to switch from this like outward automation where it's like all the things that actually keep us tied together in any way as a society are going to be automated out of existence stop focusing on that stuff and start focusing on ways that you can free up more time so you can do more of your creative connective pursuits right so if you don't have to you know have 15 individual sessions with people a day if instead they you know that you can automate your so i think personal automation like ways people can personally automate their lives so that they can have more free times to pursue other endeavors. That's the way automation. And so if somebody can, if people can start trying to create technologies to help individuals automate their life better, as opposed to dominate society, well, then that's the way it should be going. Right. Those exist. And Tim Ferriss wrote the four hour work week and upwards yeah. exists. Yeah. And like all those things exist, but I do think it's a different conversation when we're talking about robots and but, AI and the singularity. And, and I think it's important, even if that does improve, if robots and machine learning improves my individual productivity, but at the expense of a sovereign humanity, then- No, that's no good. Have a that's not, conversation yeah. about it. That, that, I mean, no, I, 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 I agree with you. That, 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 I guess that isn't sort of the part that I'm talking about. Like uh, to me- I'm talking about kind of, the large scale, like these giant behemoths, like right. Twitter and- Amazon so and there's a simple the there's a simple way to stop that process of what happening with Amazon is if everybody gets off of Amazon they'll have nothing to deliver. We need to boycott Amazon. Right. Like right. that has to happen. It, it, it's just like a no brainer, and it's only our fucking addiction to convenience that's stopping mm -hmm. it. And it's such a smart move for us to get out in front of the terrible thing that we know we're all waiting for. Like we're waiting for it all to crumble, but everyone seems to be waiting for it to happen to them mm -hmm. in some like victimy way. Whereas if we boycott Amazon, we're getting out in front of it, and sure, we'll be more inconvenienced, but we'll also engage our grassroots communities in 3D more, which is healthier and better anyway. Yeah. Um, we need to disrupt this, this structure, this, this whole craziness, like something's got to give and I don't want to wait for it to give. And then right. I'm reacting to it. Yeah. Let's just I, break it. I hardly use Amazon because I'm actually more impatient than the people who use Amazon because <laughs> I, I want to have something the moment I pay for it. Right. So like I, to me, there's something more satisfying about right. overpaying for my supplements at Erewhon because I can have them right then. <laughs> not also, you're not allergic to driving in LA, which is so weird. Well, I, it's just that Erewhon is on my way to work. <laughs> so they haven't automated a way for me to get to work yet. You know what I mean? So right. like there's no, there isn't a train, like a, a train situation between here and my work. Right. So um, but for me, like, the, like when I want something, I, I actually want it now. <laughs> like, I don't want to wait two days and right. pay shipping for it or have a prime membership for it. Like, I don't, you know, like until they, they come up with the thing where like it comes out of the computer and I can grab it, then right. I'm it's still like going to. They're 3D printing your chlorella tablets. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. So, yeah. So for me, but I recognize that most people love that. Oh my God, I just ordered it last night and I just woke up and it's already at my door. Right. Like, right. you know, even people I know who are philosophically opposed to uh, Amazon love the, the magic of, oh my God, it's here already. I wasn't expecting it for two more days, right? Because sometimes it I comes mean, back I'm ideologically opposed to it, and I am a Prime member, but when my stuff arrives... <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, so conflicted. I'm just like, ugh. And then when I see them delivering on Sundays, like, 
it, it just feels so wrong to me. I don't know. I'm, I'm more anxious. Unless you really, unless you really need something and then it feels so right. <laughs> uh, but, and it, it, we would be wise to make it a coordinated effort, which by the way, was everything that they blamed their deplatforming on in the, in the conversation that we will get to. Okay. But that was the answer for everything. Like it appeared to be in a coord- a coordinated attack. All right. Whatever. So, okay. So we're st- like, uh, we probably might finish on Andrew Yang before 637. So that is, um, I, have, I have one other thing. I'm happy, yeah. to hold, but I do have one other lingering Andrew Wang thing. Oh, no, no. So I was just going to say what, uh, what else from that Andrew Yang conversation needs to be checked. I, I was trying to look back at your, uh, um, that was the only thing that I wrote this one thing that I heard him say, um, and you know, I'm not one to play the chick card, but it was just something that struck me also because last week I was working on my crisis of masculinity article. So I was in that conversation and Joe asked, <laughs> asked Andrew Yang if he was concerned about how much presidents age and how more quickly oh, yeah. they age. And his response was, well, my wife and I've been married for 20 years and she's had two kids. So I don't think she's going anywhere. And only after he insulted his wife and referred to that thing, did he go, yeah, I mean, I guess I could take some supplements or like his first thing was to go to like where his wife would leave him or, or not. And then the second one was about his own personal experience of that. It just seemed like this weird sort of fragmented like marriage program, right. biological imperative programming thing it just struck me as weird as a, right. as a weird initial response to the question that like yeah. oh I my thought, wife has I said when I heard it. she's not gonna go anywhere yeah I, I i remember thinking that was weird when i was listening I, I can't remember if i listened to it live or if i listened to it recorded but that, i did think that was a weird answer to the question yeah um yeah it yeah, was just a I little bro He was actually, he was a little bro for me. He kept calling Joe man. And I was like, does he call everyone man? Or does he just like adopt to whoever's asking him questions and take on their speech patterns? Well, that's what it felt like to me because I, I, I experienced him completely different than, than how he was on Sam Harris. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And so, but that would also be, <laughs> and I know I'm, I'm going to get myself into trouble with this. Cause everyone's going to say, you think everything is mind control, but that would also <laughs> be a sign of a mind controlled individual as somebody who just, adapts the speech pattern of somebody who or a Pisces or any uh, it could be like a matcher like there are a million reasons you know a a people teaser a Libra like there are other politician right exactly <laughs> like when, when Obama used to talk all folks see when he would get in front of like you know middle, middle America folks or right <laughs> watching Hillary Clinton introduce right people. talk about hot sauce when <laughs> she was talking to African-American crowd it was like whatever dude right totally. yeah so okay so are we I'm have complete on Andrew here? Yang. Okay. All right. So and, done with Andrew Yang. So you have, let's see, I did, we, we skipped over the first thing, but you sent me a quote from <laughs> your lefty friend who said, I can't get behind anything that guy does in response to Trump's choice to withhold funding to universities who are oh, meeting for yeah. I mean, this isn't anything new because we know that Trump derangement s- syndrome is a thing, but like, who, who knows what's going on? It's such an interesting wrench to throw into this conversation that Trump is pulling this executive order to like clamp down on college campus censorship. Uh, like, it was like, what a baller move. And now is he going to run on that? Is that going to be his reelection platform? He's going to take every disgruntled <laughs> lefty and pull, like it's so diabolically brilliant. Right. But, but, but because I, I, I feel that there's got to be a but here. Like there's <laughs> something, he has this way of like, taking a lot of politicians too. Obama was masterful at this too, is making something sound like it would be for increasing freedom, but really there's some tyranny wrapped up in it. Like it might be like, Oh, you have free speech, but no BDS movement. Right. Like, you know, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Like he, but- just, he just is saying that, that Elon Omar should be kicked off of committees and resigned from Congress because of the things she says about Israel. Right now I have plenty of problems with Elon Omar. I, I you know, or whatever, but, but there's gonna like it's not just gonna be i believe in free speech all the way this is there's no for sure at this point it's a sound yeah. bite, so who really knows sound bite. Yeah. my point was that i was talking to like standard issue east coast lefty i don't i don't know how they're self-identifying now democrat maybe um and he <laughs> was we had been working on um i punched up a commercial treatment for him and Mm -hmm. he he got notes back immediately that were like this is sexist this is offensive (laughs) (laughs) you're like yes (laughs) like nothing for all like like um 
like story description. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So he was sort of bitching about the censorship that he's experiencing in, in his business, mm -hmm. in advertising. And I mentioned this Trump move because it had happened like the day before. And he was like, I can't get behind anything that guy does. And it was just like that blanket, like- Well, it's like lefties who are now pro-war because Trump was pulling out of Syria. It's this, it's yeah. this crazy, like they're, they've given up their free will and their right to critical thinking to just be against him. Every, everything is about being anti-Trump. Yeah, it's yeah. so infantile and lame. Like I can't even take it seriously. It's just so retarded. Yeah, it, it, it is. It, 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 I, and I think maybe we've talked about this here before, but that Arkin guy who wrote the letter, who used to work for the New York Times, who's like, I have to resign because I can know, I, now, I have colleagues who are now, you know, pro the things they used to be against just because Donald Trump is now, you know, you know, pro anti, you know, for pulling out of Syria or whatever. So, yeah. yeah. So, okay. Oh. So let's see. Well, that was that. That was so, a little okay, so aside. We did Andrew Yang. We did the Amazon boycott. Oh, that kind of leads into, and this is super quick, but like, and I know it's not completely topical, but I got a bug up my ass today about the um, AT&T Time Warner merger. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking at it and looking at the press on it um, because it's disgusting and it's just like, it just so annoys me to hear people talking about the Russiagate nonsense and whatever stu AOC, like just whatever dumb shit they're talking about where it's like, this is a real thing that would be great if our nation could focus on and really talk about like these huge freaking monopolies. And so I found the New York Times op-ed piece on it when it came out in June mm -hmm. and they said, I'm sorry, I sent you so many notes. <laughs> it's okay. Trying to find, oh, the, so this was a quote. The government's antitrust challenges to this $85 billion deal was one of the flimsiest assaults against a corporate merger in recent memory. These two companies don't even directly compete with each other. Wow. <laughs> that, that was in the New York Times. Like, I was literally laughing for like five minutes straight when I read that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the backwards forwards of like, okay, this is the lefty magazine that's now pushing for corporate monopoly. Like, right. That goes to what we were just talking about, right? Like okay. everything is the inverse of what it used to be in the inverse of reality. And so it, 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 it's weird, right? It's, it's well, it's because so you It's confusing. Like you can't, this is why no one's taking action because it's so, there's so much, um, well, Common it's the, dissonance around it's it. The, it's the, this is how you herd the sheep from right to left. You get it really confused like that, right? right like, right. so, and since you mentioned her, the interesting, there's some interesting stuff going on about AOC this week, right? Both those videos came out that show that she answered a casting call to sort of become <laughs> the justice Democrat, her and all of these new women like Elon Omar and Rashida Tlaib. But I and, thought we knew that from that group she was in that she promotes. Like I didn't, or was did that just come out this week? Because I know she's been aligned. So I, I with think that the videos about. that showed her, like oh. the, the process, just came out, and it, it is a little weird where she's talking about, you know, the spiritual. It's like she's spiritual. a Spice Girl. <laughs> well, she's talking about having had. A, she's talking about having had a spiritual experience at that the Dakota Access Pipeline protest. Well, where's your, and, and people were right to say, well, where's your selfie? You have a selfie of yourself doing everything else. Were you really there? So there's all this weird stuff. And then now she's in trouble also because it appears that she had has done with her PAC com committees and stuff like that. The same kind of shit that traditionally Republicans have been accused of doing by the left. Right. And now she's being accused of doing it. And suddenly the left is like, oh, no big deal. <laughs> this is like the dumb shit. And I'm not saying you're wrong. Like, yes, these things are legit where it's like, can we just talk about the real big stuff? Like I'm so tired of all this little piddly, yes, politicians are crooked and do gross things. Like, can we just deal with the big issues like the giant fucking oligarchy monster that's breathing down our throats well i think this but like to, to your to, i was mentioned that because of your point about like the shit that the left used to be against they're now for right like so it's, it's all of these things it's so that are twisty happening. turning yes. this is how this is how but the point is that this is how they keep people distracted from dealing with the big thing right is that everybody would rather squabble over this right left nonsense right like like rather you know they would rather fight over racism than classism right right they would rather like bring down the little the little prince rather than the big king right like it's the whole like that's it, this has been like a trick that's been you know deployed against the people since the beginning of time it's bread and circus right totally. this stuff is entertaining and people like throwing poop at each other in the sandbox <laughs> like they don't like they don't like walking up to the dragon by themselves right 
you know? And so like, that's the whole deal, right? Yeah, so totally. So everything's yeah. ass backwards right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you had this segment here. Mm. Oh, there was this fragmentation piece that I noticed. It's quite heady though. Okay. Um, and I'm wondering how much time. Yeah. I, I think this was, this might be a little confusing to kind of get into. This might be a topic for like, its own I think it's a little as yeah it, it let's let it be its own sort of like yeah dude its chick own problem. video sometimes <laughs> okay so was there um okay so I just want to quickly we're going to get into talking about the Joe Rogan podcast that just happened a few hours ago but since we're going to get on the topic of Joe Rogan again I just wanted to say that like uh so the show that Robert and I did on Friday <laughs> we did a matrix mash live Right. And which was amazing oh, and a must watch for everyone you. watching. So, so I received, well, we, Robert did not, even though it aired originally live on Robert's channel, he somehow did not receive a copyright claim. But I, when I put it up on our channel a few days later, I, um, we got a lot of views pretty quickly. I mean, not a lot for us, not a lot in comparison to how many views he gets, but more views than uh, I, than, you know, we generally get on a video in the first few hours right i think we were up at a thousand within the first the first few hours and uh so we got a copyright claim off plant media did robert robert did not which i'm glad for him that he didn't but you know robert had included a clip which i tend not to do, do you do just because i don't i don't have time to go gather the clips but for this reason but it should be fair use right like there are a million clips of joe rogan that every improvement puts on their channel on the internet most of them don't get copyright claims otherwise people wouldn't do it and so you know I, 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 it's interesting to me. So it wasn't a strike. It's a claim, which means there's no problem. I don't have to delete my video. I'm not in any trouble. It doesn't affect the status of our account. It's just saying that he can put ads on our video and get the money from it, <laughs> or he can have access to our video stats. There's not an ad on the video. So he hasn't done that. So obviously they're looking at our video stats. And so like, I don't, like, I, I don't, I would, I would have been very, I, this actually all very much surprised me. But, you know, are they irritated at what I'm saying? And I just want to put it out there. Like, I don't know if he is and I don't, don't care, but I'm not accusing him of being like a shill or being in on it in some like majorly intentional way. What I'm saying here is that, Joe, you're under mind control like the rest of us, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that people's image, people's persona, people's likeness, right? Like, especially when they're talented or with charisma or a celebrity or just happen to be good at something or talented, sometimes gets used in ways that isn't the intention of that person. And suddenly that is being used to steer a movement, frame a conversation, dissuade people from looking into something, push people to look into something. And it's happened to all of us. And so, like, you know, I... I every day continue to wake up to, to the fact that I've been under mind control, right? And a lot of times, just when I think I'm totally out of the mind control, I realize there's a deeper layer of mind control. And so this goes for Joe, this goes for Alex, this goes for Eddie Bravo, and it goes for Danny, for Danny and I, right? And so all I'm saying here is like, I'm not like trying to like call you out, turn people against you. I enjoy listening to your podcast. I used to enjoy it more when it didn't feel like you were so controlled. It feels more controlled now than it used to feel five, seven years ago. Okay. But that tends to happen with growth. But my point is just that like, I don't even, you know, that something funky is going on here. And the way that that show went down seemed like the end of a controlled operation and maybe the beginning of a new one. But, you know, I just thought it was kind of interesting. So I titled my video differently than Robert did. And, you know, during the video I talked about that, I thought this was the end of Operation Sacred Cow and I titled the video, No More Sacred Cows. And, you know, so I'm wondering if that got under someone's skin because I really do think that there was something that existed called that. So. Here's my thing. I don't think there's any evidence to indicate that you've gotten under anyone's skin or that Joe has any beef with, with you. I think all the evidence is, is that Joe's tracking you and that you're on Joe's radar and he's watching your videos. But there's nothing to say. Like, he might be totally on board and, like, figuring out, like, just trying to drum up the courage to reach out to you. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's been no evidence of ill will. So let's just assume that, like, Joe knows you're rad and is just really <laughs> intrigued by your point of view on his whole deal. Okay, let's go with that. Whichever one it is. Well, I, I, I would not presume that I could get under, I, I, I'm 100% sure he probably doesn't know who I am. It's probably an algorithm and a broad. You're not 100% sure. Because someone made a choice 
to right. check your stats and not put an advertisement on. Like, right. that's silliness. Right. You, do, you, are, you don't know. You don't know. But I don't know. Radar. That's my it, assumption. It is, whatever it is, I, it, 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 you know, it, it, it was more entertaining than anything to me. Um, but yeah, I don't, it, 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 it is what happened. I was very surprised, but um, I hadn't heard of this thing where they could do a copyright claim. I had heard of that. Yeah, this is a new thing. So, and oh. it's interesting that they went after you and not Robert. That's what's interesting. Right. Mm -hmm. um, can we pause so that I can pee real quick? Yes. <laughs> All Sorry, right, I'll edit We're out. We're pausing. We'll be right back. <laughs> Leave it hanging on the line. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having an issue. Okay. Okay, hold on a second. I just have to put my pants make, on. <laughs> I'm going to make a funny when we come back. Okay, three. Oh, put your pants on. <laughs> So your <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. Okay, we're back. Danny, I just have to ask you, did you just go to the bathroom to get your instructions from the CIA as to what you're talking about? Hundred percent. I figured since we were talking about the only show I've ever seen Joe go to the bathroom, ever, ever, right, ever, right. let alone multiple times at the same time in his guest. I want to just act it out as like performance art. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. So that, so now that we've talked about that, so whatever it is, I take it all in good humor. I enjoy doing the show. It's interesting to me. Um, the, the, you know, like Robert gets gone after for some, for some things. I'm kind of surprised that that didn't happen. The only thing I can think of is maybe it's harder to, we streamed live on his channel. And I wonder if like, that's the difference is I, I, I uploaded a pre-recorded video. Well, also that. Robert has so many videos and Robert, I mean, he's got the knowledge, but like, you're the enemy of the state. Like, <laughs> like you're, <laughs> you're the scary one. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. I guess I'm scary now. <laughs> In uh, the best ways. Uh, okay. Like you pose a real threat to national security. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. Um, always surprised when, they, when, when they meet me in person because I am a terrifying person, but I'm also this little. <laughs> so, <Tiny. laughs> okay. okay. So now we'll just continue down the Joe Rogan path here because I did not know this. Um, but on the, when I got out of work today, I saw that Joe was finishing up a podcast, having Jack Dorsey back on so and exciting. a woman who apparently is, <laughs> Jack Dorsey's mouthpiece or handler. Her name was <laughs> Valle. I couldn't say her. I, what's her name? I don't want. I'm not trying to be rude. I, I don't know. I think we'll just call her the the woman. Okay. I, I'm not trying to be rude, but I mean, I'll be rude about other I mean, stuff. I can look it up, but I know it was like Valle Valle Gape or something like that. Like I can't. I, I I mean, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'll be rude about other stuff that's worth being rude about. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I might be saying it wrong, and then I don't want to be insulting her. I think it was Vajia or whatever it was. It was Vajia Gape. It's some very lovely lady. <laughs> okay, so she's she's like the head of like the secure the, the the trust and security people at Twitter. So she was on with Jack Dorsey, and then they brought Tim Pool on to be sort of opposing. And I must say that like I have developed more of a liking for Tim Pool since his first appearance on Joe Rogan. He's been more aggressive. I still don't like the fence sitting and the lack of willingness to acknowledge that there's conspiracy going on anywhere. But I do think he is 
really starting to push some buttons. But he had so that he had the three of them on, and I only got a chance to watch about the first hour. Danny watched a little bit more, but this was happening. Yeah, I think it was like the, an hour and a half in the car on the way home from work before we did this. And oh, I, um, I got one fifty in. Yeah, and this I, Jack Dorsey is just a doofus, man. He just can he barely just, even speak. I mean, I don't want to insult him because, like, I do. He's right ridiculous. Enough. He's Someone just not dumb. very smart. Like, he's just not very smart. And he doesn't have the capacity to think beyond, like, a narrow, linear, first-tier concept. Well, he has a pre- pre-recorded... He, he has like a pre- He's like, he has a pre-recorded talking points and, like, seven words that they've programmed him to say. And he just, like, says those with a bunch of little words. I don't think he's programmed. I just think he's dumb. I just, I'm sorry, that's so rude. Limited. I just think he's limited with a small IQ and a contracted consciousness. And it doesn't... Like, he... He's in over his head. Yeah. So, do you think, do you think he's like deliberately under mind control? I, I mean, I, it, it's hard to tell with someone like that. Like, I, I, I mean, it's hard. I mean, I don't think people end up being the heads of Facebook or Twitter or Google or something like that unless they're, you know, being controlled in some manner. Like, you know, like they want to roll these kinds of things out. They want people. Maybe. Think, it's just. The tech thing think, is novelty on our planet. So, like, how far? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, when was MK Ultra started? Uh, so, like, it, you know, it, it, it's recorded back to like the fifty, you know, like the fifties, basically. So, did right? they foresee these social media networks? Like, I feel like these are outliers who well, pop up and they're just don't realize what they have, and then of course they've been infiltrated in certain ways. Well, yeah, I think that I think that a lot of these were started with funding from Incutel, which is the CIA's way of funding the development of things inside the United States, which they're not supposed to do. Okay, so I, I, think, about I, I do think that sounds amazing. Yeah, so <laughs> you can look up Incutel, um, but, but yeah, no, I do think that like this is stuff that like is ruled out by like Tavistock and Rand and stuff like this, right? I think it's uh, things that are ruled out by uh, DARPA and by intelligence agencies. And it may be that they have the idea and then they find the person to do it, or they go looking for people with unique ideas and then they fund them. And they take control of it. And I think that was the case. You know, I, I think that was the case with like Facebook and Twitter and, and Google and all this kind of stuff. Um, so, and yeah, I do think that they do have some level of predictive software to know who's going to do what and kind of get out ahead of it. Um, it's possible. He just didn't, yeah, he just strikes me as someone who doesn't know what's going on. But he's dumb. Like, I just, like, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. love when he's Joe's just, like, He's just simple. Like, simple and dumb yeah. and linear and doesn't, really doesn't get it. And what's have weird the capacity to, to get it. What's <laughs> weird to me is he just, all he could really seem to get out was how his concern with everything is that making sure people are physically safe, right? Totally. And that's, and, is the, like, the, he's the protector of the, the arrogance of that, yeah. of it, like, mm-hmm. he's... He's going to protect everyone. But it's also, it's not everyone, as they discuss. It's this one protected class of people called trans, which is some, for some reason, like, mm. taking over everyone's protected urges. I mean, I didn't realize that that was, I, I mean, I, I thought the point of the podcast was going to be to talk about why they ban conservatives more than, than liberals. And maybe it will get there, but the part that I've got to so there. far is just there. about trans. and. Um, it, it, it is, um, so you and I were talking about before we started, like the part that, about this whole thing that is weird to me is that the, the thing that seems to be the biggest issue period now, like we didn't even think about it five years ago, 10 years ago, if you would have said that this was going to be the thing that is like really tearing, like causing the culture war, people would have been like, you're insane. Like I've seen one, one in my life. Right. Or no, whatever. Right. Totally. Totally. I, like I, you know, grew up here in Los Angeles and know all kinds of people. I had to be told what the term cisgender meant like a year, a year and a half ago. I never heard it before. I was like, what? That's the weirdest word I've ever heard. So this thing that like was not a thing is all of a sudden the only thing. It's the thing. Yeah. It's the thing. And it it is so, um, like this is the part, like the things that have been okay for everything else throughout time. When I was little, I got my feelings hurt for like a million reasons. Of course. Right? And it was like, that's part of life. Sticks and stones can break your bones, but names will never hurt you. That was what like the adults would say to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that was it. So like, what happened to that? Well, I think this is my theory on it in watching his mouthpiece take over. Cause she was like, what? 30, 30, 30 33, 34, I would yeah. say. 
Yeah, so she's of that generation, and I've talked about this before, but I really think that this is a lot of what's driving it, is these thin-skinned iGen types who grew up without ever having their feelings hurt, without ever losing at tag or without, and you know, keeping score in soccer and wearing helmets so that they didn't get a boo-boo on their bike. And like <laughs> everything was so, you know, like padded with safety shit for them that like they have no metal. They cannot handle anything. And then I also think that like LBGTQ, whatever the letters are, is like very fashionable. It was very fashionable for these kids growing up to like, you know, it was like a cool way to have an identity. And I'm not, I'm not diminishing like the, the gravitas of that choice, but I also think there's an element of it for that right. generation where it was like fashion That's and right. yeah. And so, and then there's this just like gross victim virus that is has been thrust into our consciousness mm -hmm. um and i think it's it's just this noxious alchemy of all of these elements is giving us this now that's if i view it from an honest way right that's from mm -hmm. my perspective of seeing like well these are the breakdowns that i'm seeing expressed through the consciousness so the part that's weird to me about this is like i have can't say i've known a ton but i've known some transgender people right in my life uh, it, like, and certainly a lot of people who like you know, maybe you know like on the border like drag queen types and you know what i mean or whatever but some trans yeah. people um most of them are pretty thick skinned <laughs> yeah but it they're they're not bo like right so like they're not bothered by stuff they've been used to being made fun of their whole life they don't give any shits like they like they're they're really so this whole thing that like all of a sudden these new people these this new group of either transgender people or fluid or questioning or non-binary or even just the social justice warriors or who are, are who are their defenders this thin skin it's like this is a, a new this is a very new thing but i think this thin skin is is because of this mistaken child rearing that right. we wise to acknowledge and course yeah. correct they're not so letting they kids play outside without they're not letting kids play outside without adults Shit. Exactly. And, yeah. and the seatbelt laws and like, obviously we're not going to go backwards, but like we've gone to the freaking extreme with everyone getting their participation awards and what constitutes bullying. And yeah, it's, it's the oppression Olympics mm -hmm. piece. Um, and what was weird was hearing them like, this was the part that was, I mean, there were so many parts that, that I thought were so gross, especially when they broke down the Milo deplatforming and the Alex sense. Jones. Didn't make any sense. Yeah. No, neither of them made sense. There were so many leaps that Joe didn't pick up on and Tim didn't pick up on, but I, I don't, I don't fault Tim because Tim has such a list that he's yes. going through and I, I can appreciate that. I, 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 and I don't, I actually don't fault Joe on this either because Joe's thinking about, he's trying to talk about one thing, but they're actually talking about something else, right? Like they're, and what they're doing is they're basically saying like that, all they're concerned about is intention, but they, they ascribe intention whenever they want. When somebody else says that that wasn't their intention, it doesn't count. <laughs> well, that, yeah, because that's exactly, like, that's the thing. It's that the, she, so she said when she was talking about the rules for when they deplatform people or suspend them or whatever, she says if the abuse is intentional and if the person view, is viewing it that way and reports it to us. So you could call me a bunny rabbit and I could choose to view that as anti-Semitic and sexist and racist. And because I'm choosing to completely like personalize and mangle what you're right. saying to me, that wins because I'm trans. Because I'm- well, I have like When they were talking about that, that tiff between this Megan Murphy person and some trans activist or whatever, where Megan Murphy got kicked off of Twitter for saying men aren't women though. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. And they're saying that's yeah. abuse and that's intention of abuse. And or it could just right. be a statement of biological fact. Well, and it's also like who who is Jack Dorsey or this <laughs> whatever her name is? <laughs> I, I'm not saying that to be rude, but not trying to be rude. I just can't say it. Totally. Yeah, yeah exactly. But um, who are they? 
to decide what someone else's intentions are. Right. And the thing is, is that the people who are playing the oppression, the Olympics, are choosing this lens of perception. They're choosing to see the world as being something that's against them. And they're looking, they're filtering reality mm -hmm. through looking for attacks. So of course they're constantly creating it. Because one of the things that she said was, um, like when she's seeing someone's post on Twitter, she says, why are you doing this to a trans person? Like right. the narcissism of the, like, like it's that person's intention to do it to someone right. else. That's all made up nonsense to affirm a victim's story. So that's creating it. And that has to be acknowledged, but it's not like, instead we're deferring and we're like destroying our constitutional right for this ridiculous, like made up illogic. So Joe actually did a really good job in repeatedly saying you are creating a protected class. I love every time he yeah. said that, I was just like thumping hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, like he, like, you know, like, I, I mean, I'll, when he does a great job, I'll acknowledge it and say he does a great job. Yeah. He was so <laughs> yeah. on that. That was great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, it was just, it's just weird how much of this, and I'm wondering how many people are trans? Like what is the larger percentage that everything is being so distorted to save these, this group's feelings? Well, I would also, I, 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 on top of the question of how many people now are actually trans, my, another question, because I, I didn't get a chance to watch it, I did save it. Um, but something came up in my feed the other day that looked like five people that looked fairly young, still in their tw uh, late late twenties at oldest. And the podcast was about tr untransitioning. Uh -huh. so these people transitioned. So my question is not only how many people are trans, but how many people have been living trans for at least more than five years or more than ten years? Because I have a feeling that a lot of these people who are trans right now aren't going to be trans in five or ten years. Absolutely. When I was researching the article that got me into so much trouble. That seven, eight years, six, seven years ago now, um, I interviewed this trans woman who was like, I totally regret it. Like, I look like a freak. I have cancer. Like, it's it was a mistake. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's everyone, but no. the other piece, which is a part of this narrative that is, I do believe this is being engineered. Like, I don't think this was organically birthed from, it's, it's, it's just too weird. You know, all of the elements are so weird. But, um, one of the things that she said, I'm sorry, I'm going through the notes. It's okay. Um, um, oh, this was it. Was as, so when Joe was pushing on that trans is now a protected class, mm -hmm. she brought up, she immediately goes to citing statistics about right trans suicide rates and that is such a standard issue part of that narrative yes like as soon as you start talking trans immediately go to murder rates uh violent attack rates or suicide rates because that's exactly when the, so when the this trans story first got mainstream play was in i think it was 2013 when katie couric interviewed Laverne, whatever. I might have talked to right, the girl from Orange is the New Black. Yeah, exactly. And when Katie Couric asked her about like if she'd had her junk cut off, Laverne was like, "I really don't want to talk about that. I would rather talk about." And she just goes on to talk about these statistics of all the abuse. And in that pause of "I don't want to talk about that. I'm tired of that question." I had this moment of hope of like cool. I hope you're going to talk about why this is so empowering and how it's like bettered your life and how it's so amazing to be living your truth so that I can feel into that and understand. But instead of doing that, she just went straight to like anchoring in. It was the origin point for this giant victim narrative and ah. sorry for us. Like that was where, where the first time it hit and it's sustained ever since. And now any trans conversation you have, it's just mm -hmm. like pause for well, the moment person. She also started the quoting the American Association of Pedi P P Pediatricians and stuff like that when, when they were talking about, you know, Ben Shapiro's view on things, right? And she was oh. like, well, I'm not going to believe that because yeah, he's quoting biology and she's you know so it is interesting how just this default thing to go to like well you know and start start citing st statistics which doesn't give you any right it doesn't give you any way into feeling feeling somebody's sort of 
Exactly. Like, ex- yeah. and, and that's my thing. It's like, if you're okay, if you're, I'm assuming that someone's making this choice to make their lives better and to empower themselves. So talk about that instead of continuing to sustain these other things that you don't want to happen. Like, why do you want that to be the framing on right. it doesn't, it doesn't make sense if this is coming from an authentic, and I'm not saying it's not coming from an authentic place, but it's also, if you're looking at depression rates and suicide rates, yeah, if someone has gender dysphoria, like, I think that's going to have its own psychological issues beyond just transitioning, you know? So like right. how many tributaries are we going to examine that are contributing to all these terrible, you know, awful things? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it, 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 I mean, I get what you're saying. It is kind of heady and it just be like, I just, I mean, quite honestly, I was getting a headache listening to the podcast, right? Because like, I don't, to me, like, how did we get here, right? And it's not to me, it's not saying that like, what they're talking about is of no importance or of no value. I'm not saying that, but it's just like, I don't like, for at least the last three years now, four years, maybe like all we've really been talking about is gender and race and sex and stuff like that. And it's just gotten to the point for me of being so boring that like, I don't want to look at the computer or the television or any screens because they're like, like, so like, it's kind of like if, if the words Trump, Russia, racism, trans and gender were taken out, you weren't allowed to say them for like a day. You know what I mean? Nobody has, it's, it feels also like privilege and entitlement, privilege, entitlement, all this kind of stuff, all this stuff having to do with identity and blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's gotten to the point where like, that is like all anybody, not, not all anybody cares about, but like everything, like the, the, the microscope has been drawn in so tightly it's on so this tight. Thing. Like, There's no it, perspective. So this goes back to where we started the show. It's, I do think this is being intentionally socially engineered to confuse us and to, to distract us. And this also goes to. It's like circus mirrors. It's like when everything, like, like everything's no, out of focus and yeah, yeah. Okay. But this goes back to what I touched on briefly with Jack, but I feel like there's a solution because there's a part like Jack says, and I don't know whether this Jack is. Dorsey. Jack Dorsey. I don't know whether this is bullshit or not, but he says that he, the reason he's going on all these podcasts, because he wants to make it better and he want, he's hit a wall and he wants there to be a larger conversation about it. So assuming that that's true, then what I'm seeing, and I've, for a long time, I've known like our way out is spiral dynamics, but the gist is just, where do we implement it first? Can you tell, can you explain to the people what spiral dynamics is? Yeah. So spiral dynamics is a system created by Claire Graves that delineates how consciousness, how human consciousness evolves. And the way that human consciousness evolves is through different steps and they're not hierarchical, but they do happen to follow the same order. So he color codes them. So um, like, the blue level of consciousness is more authoritarian and people who believe in religion and systems of marriage and that type of thing. The green level of consciousness is people who are more into like recycling and saving the oceans. And so there are these different levels of consciousness and the way that consciousness evolves is we transcend and include every level that came before us. Okay. Um, And then there's a distinction, which I've talked about before, between first tier consciousness and second tier consciousness, which is like a quantum leap in consciousness. Mm -hmm. So when we evolve from first tier consciousness to second tier consciousness, we go from being completely me oriented to being we oriented. And then we start to understand that we're part of a larger construct and we can start to think and act in service to that construct. So what I'm seeing rub up against us and what we're rubbing up against is that people whose consciousness is not very developed, it hasn't been evolved that you know enough to keep up with the technology that they've been tasked Mm -hmm. to proliferate so it's like from a very simple level like this beautiful woman and jack dorsey do are not operating at a level of consciousness to understand the larger implications of what they're doing or to serve the greatest good so if they really want to help they need to start bringing in people who are operating at a second tier level of consciousness to start advising and consulting and restructuring in mm-hmm. service to a healthy sustainable whole okay so i mean you know 
uh, spiritual master, or I don't like the word master, people, people of high spiritual intellect from the beginning of time had said that the thing that's going to cause problem for society is when people's uh, scientific development is faster than their spiritual development. So yes. this is kind of like that they're out of balance, right? So exactly. you know, that, that's the, uh, it is, it is, it is, you know, sometime we're going to have to do a show like more on spiral dynamics, more on gene keys, more on human, some of these things you talk yeah. about that you bring up is just part of what you know. So, you know, I think it would be interesting to, for people to understand some more about it, you know, it, it yeah. For, but I mean, um, just a, a brief, oh, like, just to simplify this, like the more expansive our consciousness, mm -hmm. we just have a, like, have a higher, greater, pers more multidimensional perspective. So you can right. imagine it. And again, it's not a hierarchy per se, but someone with, who's operating with a more expansive level of consciousness is higher up on the mountain, which means they can see farther. Right. They can see well, more. It's, it's like the bird's eye view. Like, that's the thing. Exactly. One of the things so that just, I've noticed, like, it, since, I mean, since I pulled out of the political thing, like, I don't, you know, since I became, you know, voluntarist and I don't participate in the political system anymore, I'm able to sit up on the top of the mountain and just observe, right? And I don't get emotionally, like, doesn't really, I mean, sure, I have, like, ways that I'm like, okay, this looks like this would be better for society for it to go this way, but I don't get my panties in a bunch about any of this stuff anymore the way that I used to, and it's allowed me to see things from a different perspective, and it is, you know, it's like being in the airplane and looking down, like, you can see that, like, the land is divided into little squares, right? Is it exactly. Really like a vast open field. Yeah. And the gist is, like, not choosing leaders based on an egoic like for any ego it's based on like this person is going to be able to see the most solutions to, right. the, to the most issues that'll serve the most people so this is the person who we mm -hmm. want advising us or driving the ship and we've reached a point on the planet that the people with the most developed and most expansive consciousnesses really need to start taking the wheel well, the, 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 These thing, people are too short -sighted. The, the thing is, is that what happens when their consciousness gets developed to a certain point is they don't, you don't want have to. this desire to be in control of stuff anymore. Not at all. Exactly. Yeah. But that's, but that's why I'm saying it has to be looked at as service. And that's why I'm thinking consulting is better because of course I'm, I'm sure like when I think of the people I know with the most expansive consciousness, they don't want these jobs. Like they don't want to work in a hierarchy. Like, of course not. But it's also a matter of like, at this point, it kind of doesn't matter what our personal preferences are, like, if we want to save the species and this, this experiment, like, it's going in a wonky direction. So yeah. do we, it, it feels like it's time for the grown-ups to take the wheel and, like, pull us off the cliff. And Jack yeah. Dorsey does not. Is not <laughs> well, I felt like I was, like, some sort of, like, cool kids kindergarten watching that podcast, right? Like, I'm not saying that I think they're cool, but that's the whole thing. It's like, well, Joe really certainly, Joe had his moments of like, so sir, the scale at which the ginormous <laughs> influence you're He gets so starstruck over those things. Right. How many times, I, I know you're only an hour and 50 in, but how many times do you think Jack Dorsey said scale? Should we all drink every time he says scale? <laughs> I literally, I think for the first like hour, it's the only thing he said and he must have said it half a dozen times. This is the only, it's the only thing, thing, right? Like, I, I wonder if he, we should like. <laughs> it is a great drinking game. Right, but we should ask him if he even knows what scalar technology is, right? <laughs> Scalar, scalar healing and scalar energy. He probably has no idea what that is, right? That would be the best. You, you know, you, you want somebody in his position who has an understanding of that kind of stuff, right? So course, You would hope. <laughs> I mean, I, I am really shocked, though, that Joe let them get away with how the, the reasons they were saying that Milo and Alice got deplatformed because they were so nothing they like they were, they were so not as they were framing them it was really like that was another moment where like he dropped the ball again he dropped the ball again yeah and and i and i and tim too but i think tim was but i think was tim was more focused on like the nine thousand things on his list yeah he had a lot of things he wanted to say but yeah and it's I not just, like he was gonna get milo or alex back on well, I don't, I, I, I don't, well, I can't speak for Milo because he seems to have really disappeared in a lot of ways, but I don't think Alec wants, Alex wants to be back on. I think Alex likes being the martyr. I think Alex. Well, and now with this new twist about whatever that just was and Alex like groveling and, and apologizing for. The Sandy Hook thing? Yeah, I like, don't. Well, I, I feel like, I mean, I, this has that. always been, I think this has always been part of Alex's job. This has always been the plan. This has always been the task. 
to for it to kind of go down like this. And I think Robert is right. I think Alex is about to be written out of the script, and he's going to retire with a lot of money. Yeah. And yeah, and he's going to. So you know, funny thought that he said that they would take out Paul Joseph Watson. I'm like, no, that beautiful face. <laughs> what happened? I think Robert said he wouldn't be surprised if if they took out Paul Joseph Watson, like if he was suicided or something. Did I make that up? Did he not say that on your show? I don't think so. I think maybe he's well, thinking. Well, clear, because I definitely don't want to put that into the field. That's yeah, like no. Terrible. I haven't seen Paul Joseph Watson not anywhere. He must be banned, too. I haven't seen him anywhere in a long time. And I've always well, thought- on YouTube. I, 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 haven't seen, I haven't seen his face in a long time. But he does have, the, like, the prettiest face. He <laughs> is a really so pretty, pretty face. <laughs> Then he has a secret crush on Paul Joseph Watson. I mean, I disagree with, I mean, his analysis of some stuff is funny, but I largely disagree with him, but he does have a pretty face. But um, <laughs> yeah, I remember I used to think that I was, I remember like when he first started becoming popular with Alex Jones, I was like, wow, he's pretty. Is he, is he a girl? <laughs> right? His I face know, is, he's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Oi, all right. So that brings us all almost all the way full circle. We're like, Paul Joseph well, Watson. Was that every, did we get through everything? Uh, let me see. You had a second part. Of oh, the that was my silly. I mean, it was just another trans thing. I, I mean, I feel like we've we're clear. Yeah, let's, I, yeah. I think we need to. Yeah. Done with that. Uh, yeah. So I think that's pretty much everything. Although there was the weird moment where, <laughs> where the woman was was stating her case for her deplatforming, and Tim goes, "Well, I, I understand that some people identify as trans species, so I get where you're coming." <laughs> What? That's a thing. Well, you you said you took, you said you wanted to be a bunny rabbit earlier or something. When I was little, I used to say that when I was little, and people asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I used to say a bunny rabbit. Really? I did. That's so <laughs> a couple cute. times. A couple times. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so. That was just like a silly thing where I was just like, I can't with this culture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I don't know. So let's, uh, we need to um, invent a pocket universe segment real fast here because we didn't talk about that oh, in the beginning. Well, I had so, a languaging on, thing. Oh, no, my pocket, the pocket universe was the Amazon was the Amazon boycott. That's your pocket universe? There won't be Amazon in the pocket universe. Well, exactly. And I think oh. that the, the Amazon boycott is a great, it's like our training wheels for the pocket universe because it's putting us back. I mean, you're living in 3D. Ah. Gotcha. But it'll put everyone else back in 3D because we'll have to go to the store and we'll have to mm. know the people in our community mm -hmm. to be better. And I think the pocket universe is going to emerge through that community connective. Right. Connectedness, connectivity, one of those. So you're saying one of the portals to the pocket universe is stop using Amazon. That's what I'm saying. Close the door to the portal to hell and open the door, the portal to yeah. the pocket universe. But I think that's going to need to include Whole Foods as well. Oh, I can't stand Whole Foods anymore. Like the only, like, it, like it, it's, I mean, there was a time when it was like a treat to go to like one of the bigger, fancier Whole Foods. Remember that time? Yeah, the Venice one was like, oh my God. Right. And the one in Pasadena is nice. The one in, the one in downtown Austin is amazing. Like when I lived, the last time I lived in Austin, I, like I used to just like go there and spend hours. It was, it, it, they've even, it, that one isn't even as good anymore. So yeah, I'm not into it really. Most of their, they, ha they have shelves full of GMOs and sugar and all sorts of crap now. Yeah, exactly. Remember when, remember when Whole Foods here, you see Mrs. Gucci's? Mrs. Gucci's, of course. Yeah, I used to love going to Mrs. Gucci's and my grandma. And so many samples in the deli section. Right. My boyfriend and I, it would be like, it'd be dinner to right. go to Mrs. Gucci's. <laughs> I used to go there with my grandma because she was, you know, like, back in the 80s she was like i need to get the vegetarian fed eggs you know what i mean like that was why we went to mrs totally. Gucci. i just but, watched this movie over the weekend that came out in 97 98 i think it's called with friends like these and i watch it because bill murray was in it but it takes place in la and one of the women is like oh i picked it up at gucci's and i was like yeah <laughs> yeah my grandma used to call it gucci's you know what i mean yeah. something like that Gucci. yeah yeah so, okay. So yeah, I, I can't, I don't like Whole Foods really. Like they have, there's like two or three. I mean, they're things. just part of the, the, the problem. The Borg. They're part of the Borg. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I go there for, there's like two or three things you can either Erewhon or Lassen's. And so I go to Whole Foods for those two or three things like once in a while. Um, but yeah, I don't like it either. Like I almost rather go to the regular grocery store. But I also think it's not even about liking it or disliking it. Like there are things yeah. that I do like about it as far as the things that I can get there. But like, I think we need to stop making choices that continue to honor our apathy and our addiction to convenience and our laziness. Like it's just, 
something's got to give and we're so comfortable in our yeah. easy lives and it's working against us and it's going to come to a crashing halt or we can be proactive and just make the shifts at our pace. And it does it. I don't know that it has to be such a big catastrophic deal, but it, you know, if we had enough people involved, we mm-hmm. could have an impact. Like that's realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Up, yep. Yeah. All right, guys, you hear that? Cancel your prime membership. Stop using Amazon. <laughs> I feel like it would be wise to like pick a date and like hit it all at the same time with a bang. Like, can, we get, organized can we get some feedback from people what, how, sort of about their thoughts about that? Like about yeah. if that's something that they would be willing to give up and, and you know, how, how like, you know, just that kind of look, I would like to hear from you guys on that. The other thing that I was just going to, and I didn't run this by you, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Um, we are starting to play with the ideas of having occasional guests on the show. And so uh, that's going to be something coming uh, soon. And, and um, we're probably interested mostly in the kind of guests that are sort of walking that line between like almost the alternative mainstream and the underground, right? So, you know, like not, it's a you know, different kind of guests than, than, you know, like, than like what we have on Off Planet Radio or whatever. People who are a little bit more in the free speech or, or you know, semi-political scene, but who are really outside on the fringe of mainstream kind of thing. Yeah. Um, just because I think that's where some of the interesting conversation happens. And then, you know, at the end of the episode, we'll try and pull them into the pocket universe. But, um, you know, well, it'll we, all will. Be well, we will, we will we bring will. them into the pocket universe to help <laughs> collaborate and co-create something amazing. I, I yeah. want to know like what, who people would like to see us interview. Yeah. Yeah. That was my, that was my point to bringing this up. So, I mean, you know, so if people have, you know, some people that they're interested in hearing or people that you think we may not be aware of or whatnot, then let us know. And um, we're looking forward to starting to do that. I think we have guests that we may do in the next few weeks. That will be the first uh, episode with a guest. So anyway, um, all right. Well, I guess that kind of wraps it up. If you guys Got want in. some language or life coaching dannycats.com. Yeah, I am that. taking on new clients now. So life coaching for people, I help people know and master themselves. I do quantum languaging consulting. So dannycats.com. Right. And if you would like a nutritional consultation, I also do lifestyle work, some energy healing. Hit me up on Facebook at Emily Moyer and we will see you next time. We're out of here. Bye. Bye. All right. Nope.